Today, for the very first time, I get to listen to this classic album, as recommended by this guy, who I'll introduce in a second. This is the Talking Heads' Little Creatures. Little Creatures? Mm -hmm. Little Creatures. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another album review slash reaction here on my channel. I am so excited because we have a guest on the channel again today. We have someone here in person with me, which let me tell you, it is so much more fun to react to it and talk to somebody that's here with me. I can imagine you there watching, but usually what I imagine is someone that's just mad at me for talking too much. <laughs> so it's nice to have someone here to tell me that I'm talking too much. And he can be like, shut up, Patrick. Yeah. So anyway, this is my cousin, Cody. Hello. And this is going to be his first time on the channel doing a reaction. We did just film a cool little video uh, going over some of the vinyl we bought earlier today when we were doing some record shopping in Lincoln, Nebraska. So if that sounds interesting to you, uh, check that video out. It'll probably be on my channel before I upload this one. But who knows the order that I'll do any of these in. But it'll be there sometime at some point. Uh, we each bought a bunch of records, including one really cool autographed record that I bought. And he bought a few things that he's been looking for for many years. So that was really, mm -hmm. really cool. We had a really nice day. But we're here today because I asked him quite a while ago. I was like, do you want to come onto my channel and show me a record, something I've never heard before? And I said, absolutely. Yeah. And so we've talked about it. We've been th he's been thinking on his end. I've been thinking on my end for maybe some stuff I want to show him. And I think what we're, our plan for is to our plan, at least for right now, is to listen to this entire Talking Heads album. We already said what we're going to do. So we're going to listen to this entire Talking Heads album. And I know the Talking Heads are a band that's really special to you that you really like a lot. Yeah, for sure. Are they your favorite band? No, they're... But they're up there. Up there. I mean, they're like one of my favorite 80s. Sure. Bands. And so so I'm really excited for this. I don't know who Talking Heads are at all. And I'm really curious to see because Cody and I have talked about music a lot over the years. But it's really interesting. I really don't have a full grasp on what you I would you would I would consider to be like music you would love. Yeah. And I, I don't I don't think I have a grasp on you. Uh, yeah. Well, it, I have I, no I, idea if you are going to like, like this something or, or hate it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be really fun. Um. So but it, it's really interesting, too, because. I have talked to you, like most of the times when I find something that's really cool that I think maybe you'll like, I'll just send you a link and you listen to it. Yeah. So it's not like there's a ton of things that I've listened to that I think you would like that we could react to because I've already shown you lots of things. Right. That's true. Yeah. And the same thing I'm sure could be said for me. And not, But I'm lucky in that I've been so ignorant to so much music from, you know, I got into music when I was probably 12, 13 years old, which would mm -hmm. have been right around probably 2001, 2002. Mm -hmm. And I've a person who has always looked forward with music. I always listen to current music and I look forward to new things that are coming out. And so I pretty much skipped. I grew up listening to all music from the fifties and the sixties. Cause that's what my folks always listen to. Yeah. If they listen to music at all, if all music ceased to exist right now, I don't think, I think it would take them months to even notice that there was no more music in the world. Cause they care so little about music, <laughs> but I, you know, I grew up listening to fifties and sixties stuff. And so, um, you know, it's it's. I have a huge gap in my musical well, repertoire. Basically, which is weird because every teenage boy goes through a like classic rock phase. And yeah. I, now I'm gonna get into Pink Floyd. Yeah, and, and I never like, did that. And stuff. you just skipped it all. Yeah, I totally skipped it all because I was busy, get, too busy getting into like Linkin Park and yeah. Seven Dust and <laughs> Corn, not Corn necessarily, Power Man Five Thousand, Rob Zombie, <laughs> all that good stuff. But then at the same time, you know, I loved NSYNC, Britney Spears. I loved all that kind of stuff. So pop music was not something that I hated. Nelly, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So Nelly Furtado, really great stuff. <laughs> Both I am like a bird. <laughs> I like, I like She's good. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> she has two great albums. I don't know what she did after that. But um, anyway, so for those of you who are watching and you're like, what the heck's going on? If you've never seen a video on my channel before and you're here because you're a fan of the Talking Heads, know that what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about them beforehand. I don't know if we were not going to probably talk too much. We'll get into listening to the music. We'll listen to the album all the way through. Because I have a guest here, we'll probably listen to a song, then pause and talk about it. But we can also talk during the music as well. So just be aware of that. There will probably be some talking during the music. We'll listen to the entire album, and then we'll spend a little bit of time uh, talking about my overall thoughts and if I liked it as much as I hope I do and all these things at the end. But because we're going to maybe be pausing in between songs a little bit and talking between songs, there probably won't be as big of a conversation afterwards. Yeah, That's how our My Metallica videos on my channel have worked. Which, if you're unaware, I've been doing all Metallica reactions on my channel. So far, we, a friend of mine, Chris, and then another friend of mine, also named Chris, have been reacting to Metallica. I've done Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and Justice for All, the Black Album, and most recently, the brand new Metallica album, 72 Seasons. So what all do you have those left? are up. 
Well, we have Kill 'Em All, Metallica's first album from okay. 1986. Uh-huh. We also have, or 1984, I think. We also have Lulu, if I decide to do that. We also have Load. We also have Reload. Uh-huh. We also have Metallica S and M, if I want to do that. We also have Death Magnetic. We also have Hardwired to Self Destruct. Okay, so I have an entire <laughs> year of Metallica ahead of me if we decide to continue with all these, which that's the plan for now, at least to do the mainline albums. So. Okay. But if you're someone watching this because you're here because my channel has been growing because of these Metallica videos, thank you very much for being here. If you've never heard of the Talking Heads, you're in for a real treat, I hope, like I am. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of overlap between Metallica and And that's and fine. Heads, you but... know, the last few videos I've uploaded and done myself, people haven't really been watching as much. But that's mm-hmm. how my videos normally are on my channel. They usually get like maybe at most 200 views. Mm-hmm. But these Metallica videos have been getting like 5,000, 7,000 views There's and so it just kind of kinda depends there, yeah guess. they love watching metallica videos yeah. and that's cool and i'm totally getting it because i'm slowly learning about metallica we'll see if the talking heads rabid fan base yeah, shows the talking up. heads fan base shows up they're out there so one other thing that i want to say real quick is that we're not too sure about who owns the copyrights to the talk talking heads songs yeah i didn't look to see if they're all over youtube or right anything. and so I, I i don't know like older music i would be much more suspect with rather than more modern music yeah. because nowadays a lot of artists just own their own copyrights to their songs yeah rather than back in the days of record labels and, and the man mm-hmm. you know owning the record the rights to everything so if i'm forced to upload this video without the music in it know that i tried to upload the video with the music so you could hear exactly what we're hearing but if i can't do that due to copyright reasons i'll have to upload this video well, you're just listening to us talking and breathing really loudly <laughs> while the music's going on. Let's hope not. Yeah. Well, I just had to do that, unfortunately, for my Ellie Golding reaction that I just uploaded earlier this morning. I uploaded it yesterday. It got blocked in all countries. So I re-uploaded it this morning with none of the music in it, which is a big bummer. It took me like eight hours of use on my computer. I wasted 16 gigabytes of my internet, which we pay per gigabyte. So it was a giant waste of time and space for everybody. I wonder if you could but fight fight those. You can, but it takes three weeks for them to be fought. Because because what you're doing is legal Your yeah criticism yeah it's, it's and, part of fair use but yeah. the thing is like it what in most cases what you do is you say i dispute this yeah. and then they have three weeks before they have to respond and if they don't respond your video automatically gets basically the copyright taken off of it oh so the thing is you would have to be okay with waiting three weeks yeah Mm-hmm. which in a case like this i maybe could do but like my oh. ellie golding one i wanted to yeah, get you out gotta get them out there and like my depeche mode one the metallica sure. ones you know i want to you want to try to upload them the weekend the album comes that's out because that's when people are looking for 90 percent of your videos are yeah i've been doing releases. a lot more recent things new new things recently so yeah. anyway so we'll just have to see what happens with the copyright issues what i can upload what i can't upload uh but i just want to let you know that also note, in if, if that is the case, in the description of this video, I will leave a link to listen along with us. Uh, you can listen on Spotify, whatever you choose to listen to. I'll try to find a good link with multiple things. If not, I'll at least post a link to listen on Spotify and a link to purchase the album maybe on Amazon or something like that, just because I feel like it's good to represent that. If you love this so much, you can purchase it right there. Uh, obviously not affiliated links or anything like that because I'm not even like a sponsored channel or anything at this point, but I want to give everyone the option. And I will also have in the description of the video, which you probably already noticed, I will have timestamps for all the different sections, including each of the individual songs. So if you have a favorite song from this album, you can skip right to that. Uh, but you can also feel free to skip to the end to hear our sort of thoughts on the album overall. But like I said, we're going to be doing lots of talking in between the songs. So I'll probably have to maybe list what we talk about between the songs a little bit too, but we'll just have to see. So just split the songs out. People can skip to the end of each section. Yeah. Well, and probably what I'll do is I'll just say like, I'll say this is track one and then discussion on track one uh, maybe, yeah, or, or something sure. like that. It depends. If we don't talk about it that much and we end up talking over the music, I won't yeah. have to do that. But Whatever. Whatever needs to be done is what I'll do. It's not a big deal. But you can rest assured there will be timestamps that you can see on the timeline. Skip to whatever part of the video you want. Cool. So with that being said, let's discuss the Talking Heads just a little bit because I don't know anything about them at all. Yeah, so Talking Heads, I don't know if you'd describe them as like New Wave. They started in the late 70s. Oh, really? Did they have music out in the 70s? Yeah. Their first album was called Talking Heads 1977. Came really? Out in 77. Okay, that's cool. And that cool. had um, Psycho Killer on it, which you might know. Mm, it doesn't sound familiar, but... Yeah. I, I'm curious if you're going to know any of the ones on this album. I, 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 I've i never listened to... I've only listened... I mainly listen to Talking Heads like singles. Mm-hmm. Um, I just throw them in my playlist wherever, and, mm-hmm. and they show up on the radio and stuff. I listen to a lot of like XM, New Wave Channel, so they play a lot there. And they're in soundtracks and stuff. Um, but so they, so I went and looked up. I, I like what is the best Talking Heads album, uh, which was a mistake because it was like everyone says Remain in Light, which 
Um, I have that album, and it's like my least favorite one that I have. Of and, course, that's absolutely. And it's like there's no it hits on it, and it's like yeah, it's like earlier stuff, and it's, I mean, it's cool, but it's it's kind of has like a lot of like African beats on it. Oh, it, interesting. Which is okay. cool, and there's some of that on. But this you know, album. I do not like sort of like ethnic percussion and stuff. That is not <laughs> yeah. my jam. Well, we'll see. I, I we'll see how much of that is on this album. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think there's a few tracks like that, but that's all right. I'm um, not saying I won't listen to it. Just that's yeah. not my favorite thing. Um, and it's cool, and and it's fronted by David Byrne. I don't know if you've heard of him. I think sounds he's, kind of familiar. I think he's kind of done other stuff in the music business. I don't know if he's produced stuff or, or something, but um, you know, the Talking Heads broke up in the '80s. Oh, they did. Okay, and, and he's still really pop, like famous. Um, Is there a reason you did choose this album then? Yeah. So this album has. Let me let me see the track yep. list. Um, it has a couple hits on it you might know the very first track on this okay um and then the last track is my favorite talking head song okay and it's it's a little more poppy i think it's a little more mainstream okay um, it's a, one of their later albums it's 85 okay so they probably had like five or six albums out at this point um but i was just like you know and if I you're go if, with the album that i like yeah I and, and if you're new what? here you might not know like generally i tend to enjoy things that are more mainstream in a band's catalog yeah uh, and especially with 80s bands, I tend to love their mo- more, or not even necessarily 80s bands, but I tend to really like the albums that a lot of people think are the worst ones. Right. Like I'll talk for days about Eliminator by ZZ Top, but you can take Trey Soundbrays <laughs> and all their 70s albums and throw them out as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but uh, but that's just me. That's and, great. And actually the best ZZ Top all for sure came out from 1993 and on, yeah. which that's when nobody knows any of those songs at all. But Alligator, such a cool song. But It'd be great if the Talking Heads came back and reunited and put out never done that i don't think that would be really cool they may have reunited tears for fears just did that right they just put out an album last year i think you should know that yeah (laughs) well you know tears for fears is really interesting because i've tried to listen to their albums a few times and they've never really gathered grabbed me but i need to like listen to them in a setting like this where i'm like focusing on them more rather than just like putting them on to like have fun but all every tears for fears song i've ever heard that's like a single or whatever is just yeah, so yeah. perfect so we'll see but i don't expect this to sound anything like tears for fears <laughs> no not quite yeah, um we'll see but yeah they never never reunited they they put out a really famous concert film that's like considered the greatest concert film really? of all time that's interesting called um stop making sense okay um what year was that about in the that 80s? was 82 i think okay. so it was mostly their earlier stuff it's just, it's a pretty cool concert film i don't really know how you'd like determine something's the greatest of all time because it's just yeah. a film concert yeah <laughs> Um, you know, it's not exactly the last waltz, which I would say is probably the greatest one. But and who's that? That's the band when the oh. band, the band was retiring, and then they they have like eighteen different guests that cut. You know, Bob. Dylan's yeah, that on there does. And, yeah, that probably is. So that's pretty really cool. That's a pretty cool concert film. But but this one's cool. The this concert film it has David Byrne and he wears like the really big suit like the gray suit that's like comically oversized oh, you may okay. have seen that like i probably before. have seen an image of that yeah yeah um but okay. it's cool david byrne has a really unique voice so okay. if I'm you ke- hate his voice it, it, you'll be, It'll be tough to get band. through it <laughs> yeah <laughs> well we'll see what happens i'm pretty sure he sings on every song do you know the tom tom club no oh okay they were like a spinoff band of, of this of this okay not with david oh. byrne but um i think it was like kind of parallel with it. i and might it, know something if they had like a hit or something it was but... they had what you gonna do when you get out of jail? I'm gonna have some fun. I don't know. Never heard that one. That, that's they're like a female fronted band, and I don't really know the rest of the. I do have to stuff. say, just real quick, while I notice this, <laughs> if my face looks red, it's because we were outside a lot today, <laughs> walking around in the really wind and also the sun. And the sun and me don't really mix. Which you look at this pasty fellow over here, and you'd think the sun don't mix with him, no, but he know. looks just fine. He was walking on the same <laughs> sidewalks I was. But look at my red face over here. Whatever doesn't matter. My red face, <laughs> yellow arms white hands it's too bad to fix it in post yeah i can't fix this and i guess I, I could draw like a whoops i could i could like cut out the circle where my head is and color that differently than the yes. rest of the video but you would really notice the circles and honestly like <laughs> i ain't gonna do that come on come on so okay um i as far, i don't think there's much else to discuss so we can just get no. right into this yeah first though we have to do one thing look right here on the table okay we'll be right back with you and we're back. And for today's video, we got something special. Cody, I don't think you've tried this yet. We, Cody and I always go back and forth on all the different flavors of Mountain Dew. So today we've got a, the few, very few last cans of Mountain Dew thrashed apple. This is the green apple flavored Mountain Dew. Hopefully it's not too frozen because we've had it in the freezer now for... 
Oh, Got a little slushy. slush. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Oh, yeah. I'm the master of the slush. I should have waited for you. That was impolite. Mm. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Green apple. I love it. It absolutely tastes like green apple. The slush is the best part. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it'll, it won't last for very long. So, <laughs> okay. So we've got the album pulled up here and we're just going to start with track one. I'll count down for track one. And then if we end up having, if we do end up pausing between songs, which I imagine we will, I'll always have clearly labeled on screen what we're listening to. And I will try to maybe do a little countdown if we have to, because I kind of have a suspicion that this is going to get blocked. I have no idea. Yeah, it's really know. hard to tell with older stuff. Yeah. So we'll just see. Maybe to be safe, I'll kind of count down a little bit. But Okay, this is track one, and it looks like it says, And She Was. Three minutes, 39 seconds. Whole album is only 38 minutes. That's not too bad, though. There's only nine songs, 38 minutes. There's yeah. a six minute and 10 second song on here. The penultimate song is nice and long, so that's mm. really nice. Okay, and she was Talking Heads, Little Creatures. Oh, by the way, I will also say this is the 2005 remaster that we're listening to. So just so if, in case anybody wonders. Uh, let's get into it. Three, two, one. Hey! Oh, hey! <laughs> okay. If you know one song of this, it'll be this. So if you don't know this, then... Then you really don't know. It does. It does not sound familiar to me at all. Interesting. I'm gonna turn it up a smidge. Okay. The kick sounds fantastic. Is the first thing I noticed. Dude, I hate to say this, but this sounds just like Blur. <laughs> it sounds I don't know. just like Blur. I don't know if I can abide by that. <laughs> I love the piano. I love the background vocals. It sounds like there's a gang of people there. Yeah. Love that. All muted electric guitar, which is kind of cool. That almost sounds a little bit like um, twangy kind of country-ish, but not, you know. interesting there is like 90s to this yeah like especially with the tone of the guitars and what's going on interesting so i wonder if this band was influential for in 90s in the 90s a lot do they have a lady in the band i hear a female vocal in there i think i think so yeah i couldn't name you another member oh there's the members there's a lady in there <laughs> Yep. So is this new new wave music? A new wave is kind of a bad nebulous genre. thing. Yeah. Um, I think when they started out, they were more new wave. Although I'll say they were pretty consistent throughout their career um, with their sound. Yeah, with their sound. Because I mean, I mean, how can you not be with those vocals? That guitar. That that's like kind of going moving a little bit, you know. Dun, 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 dun. The effects that are on that that sort of chorusing, flanging effect is so nineties. Huh. Ahead of their time. I haven't heard any keyboards yet. Oh, there was some. But, but it's interesting. When, to me, when I think of 80s sort of pop yeah. music, which I guess is what this is. Yeah. Or when um, you think of New Wave, you think of like synths. Synths, yeah. But th there's not much. Yeah. There's... It's interesting. Oh, I love that little... thing. That's a trumpet patch on a keyboard, but with a slow uh, trans hand going... <laughs> And they're British, right? No, American. Really? I believe. That's surprising. I'm pretty sure. No, I'm not yeah, saying they, they can't they were, be. Yeah, they started out at like CBGBs and stuff like that. 
I love the piano. Ooh. Symbol two, crash symbol. Notice how they're using the crash symbol on the one side to balance the guitar on the other. Okay, did not notice that. Know that at all? Interesting. Do you want to stop and talk about it? Or? Yeah, sure. Okay. We'll restart that song. Okay. So yeah, I thought that that was really nice. Um, it wasn't what I expected really at all. Really? Yeah, I don't know what I expected. I guess I expected more keyboards. More just kind of stereotypical synth sound, yeah, like 80s. Yeah, I mean, when, if you said like 80s music, yeah. the first thing I think of is Flock of Seagulls. Yeah. They're to like me, the, that's like quintessential 80s. Yeah, I was just going to say, they're the, like the quintessential new wave band. But right? then I also think of like Human League, Culture Club, yeah. stuff like that. Sure. You know, the, the male and female singing together. Yeah, yeah. You know, I basically, I you know what I think of? I think of the uh, GTA Vice City soundtrack <laughs> is what I think of. That because was me for a long time. Honestly, too, yeah. that was what got me into 80s music. Mm -hmm. And what's up. funny is that was kind of the 80s viewed from a British perspective, too. Interesting. Like, there was a lot of, like, songs on there that were huge in England, but not here. Yeah, like, Mr. Can You Tell Me Where My Love Has Gone? <laughs> yeah, right. He's Japanese a boy. Japanese boy. <laughs> I woke up one morning and my love was gone. Oh, my Japanese boy. I'm putting my phone into airplane <laughs> mode so it doesn't beep anymore. But yeah, they're not, you're not going to hear a lot of synths. You'll hear a lot Which more. Which is really interesting to me. You'll hear a lot more brass instruments okay in the following oh songs. my god are we getting into some it's not ska oh, it's not goodness. ska. <laughs> nobody would ska. ever call a talking head ska okay good i'm glad <laughs> like, don't say that it's not ska good or or maybe there'll be keyboard like you what was the the trump oh, trumpet samples and stuff maybe? Sam maybe maybe i don't know i i'm not good at like recognizing oh that's, that's all right. a sample that's all right a um, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's right um yeah, I don't know. I what the first thing that I noticed was how great the kick sna sounded. Yeah, the snare sounded very '80s. Like there was definitely like a, a reverb to the snare. It sounded like you could hear the room that it was in. Mm -hmm. uh, the kick sounded nice and dry, and it sounded the perfect volume. Hmm. Now again, we are listening to the 2005 remaster, so I assume that this was probably recorded on tape. Like this was probably recorded analog in '85. I mean, it could have been probably. '83 is when they sort of started doing more digital stuff. Yeah. So I'm not sure. It does definitely sounds nice and crisp and clear, but I was just assuming that might have been the remaster, but I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Regardless, the frequencies had to be there in, for this to sound so good. Like it really mm -hmm. sounds good. I think. Good. So, cool. and the vocals didn't bother me that much. Okay. I was surprised when you said they weren't British because I thought I detected a slight like well, British accent. Yeah, I guess I don't know. So I I. They got big in America. I know that. Hey, Google, are the talking heads British? <laughs> On the website what we say. They say talking heads, American art rock band that was popular in the late Art rock. Art rock. Okay. There's a genre for you. <laughs> hey, Google, stop. You're going to spoil something for me. <laughs> The most famous triangle solo of all time in the song <laughs> Lady Don't Mind. <laughs> like, no, spoiler alert, Google. But okay, so from the United States, just like you said, yeah. and art rock, which is interesting. Art rock, yeah. I mean, they started off at like CBGBs and stuff, like almost punk adjacent okay. in the mid 70s. Yeah. Okay. They're kind of, they kind of had the same career trajectory as like Devo, except Devo fell off so hard at a very steady rate from their first album whereas talking heads were very consistent like this is their second to last album hold on a second is devo from the united states <laughs> yeah no way <laughs> you didn't know that I, if, if it was if this was trivia and it was the last question <laughs> i would win a million dollars i'd be like devo devo is from britain devo is devo is from the uk 100 percent. devo is famously from akron that's where the black keys come from. <laughs> Dude, in no way. But, uh, Akron, you go Akron. <laughs> Devo and the Black Keys. They got Dang. a real Akron had a like a punk music scene in the That's 70s. really cool. Um, okay, well that's really cool. And that explains now I've learned something about the Black Keys that I didn't know because that, that absolutely makes sense. I can sense. see what you mean though, because Mark Mothersbaugh of Devo and David Byrne kind of have like a kind of a wacky voice. Yeah. <laughs> like you yeah. could you could say, is that an accent? Right. We, because a lot of British music in the eighties, which a lot of it was all the things yeah. I mentioned earlier, Flock of Seagulls. It was almost like uh, a second you know isn't Flock of Seagulls American? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I don't know. Unconfirmed. <laughs> <laughs> We don't but, need to check. But all anyway, these. anyway, there was a lot of famous British pop music from the yeah, '80s, I for guess, sure. and uh, and so yeah, that's that's interesting. <laughs> so, all right, let's move on to track two, which is "Give Me Back My Name." Nope. Wait. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. Right. I mean, yeah, we sure. can double check. <laughs> 
No, I guess you're right. Yeah, give me back Alien. You're doing the same thing Chris did with oh. Metallica Black Album. That He's like, right. I would have guaranteed you Enter Sandman <laughs> did not start this album. I'm mm. like, I'm pretty sure that it has since 1991. Isn't that like <laughs> their most famous song? Oh, it's that, one of the most famous songs it? of all time. Okay. But that doesn't normally mean, normally track three on an album is the big song. No, but yeah. You know? But if something starts with such a showstopper, yeah. then how do you not remember that? Mm-hmm. Well, because people would listen to it on random. People Maybe listen he to had it in the their car, and then he listened to side B. First. No, he just put the CD in his car and left oh. it in there for months. Oh, sure. Yeah. And so I, we know whenever sense, yeah. you know. You and know. also, he thought that track three started it because he didn't like track one and track two. He track three is his favorite, so he would skip to track three. He didn't like Enter Sandman or Sabbath True, which is actually a better song than Enter Sandman in my okay. opinion. But I it's not no... that he didn't like it; it's just that he wants thrash Metallica, and Metallica's not oh, thrashy. Sure. It doesn't matter. We don't need to get. I have no that. Metallica thoughts, so we'll move on. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We can listen to Metallica. We know no. people will listen to will like that. <laughs> yeah, they would. Okay, this is "Give Me Back My Name." Three twenty-two. All right, let's go. Three, two, one. Very abrupt start. Yeah, the last song was too. But that's probably because it, uh, if we were listening to this without stopping, kind of flowed with the last one. Okay. No fade out on the last one. Yep, no fade out. Oh, we'll, we'll count the fade outs. Okay. We got the board sitting off the side. There's a word for it. Words don't mean a thing. There's also some like There's REM to this. I mean, I'm just getting so much 90s, yeah. is what I'm getting. Names make all the difference in the world. Dare I say Depeche Mode when he's singing like that? No, never. Not never, but no. I love it when a group has a female backing vocalist that's consistently used. I love that. Huh. I'm not even hearing it. <laughs> oh, it's definitely in there. I'll listen for it. That off time, that eh, 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 yeah. of the guitar. And then that. I'm pretty sure that's a guitar too. Hmm. I'm also getting like a lot of modest mouse, huh. which they were definitely well, '90s band as well. Though I like all their stuff that came after that. Yeah. Huge hi hat hit there. Or some cymbal hits. Interesting. Something must be returned to us. Something must be returned to us. So we have a rhythm guitar that's been for me off to the left, but for everybody else off to the right. And then sort of like a lead guitar kind of noodling around on the other side for the whole song. And it was like that the first song too, but I think. Not really noticing the bass at all. Yeah. You can tell that what the bass is doing, but it's not really a focal point at all. So. One thing I was going to say was they're definitely doing that 80s thing where the background vocals are just the same note pretty much the whole time, and that's all the background vocals doing. But then when it got to this part, they have an extra third part, and they're doing three-part harmony. Oh. So that sounds more pretty, and it feels more sort of final when it's done, oh. rather than that very 80s sort of like straight harmony that's just going through. Yeah. Wow, that, that felt so fast. Right. So they only did the chorus twice there, Oh. I think, in that song. Um. Yeah, there's definitely. I almost described their their sound as kind of like funk. Mm. Um, so there's definitely songs with heavy bass. Okay. That that is like front and center. Yeah. I don't know about on this album, but I noticed it. I thought a little bit more on the first track, and I was going to say that sounds kind of like slap bass, which is a very yes. 80s thing. So, 
yes that i listened to this album in preparation for this a week ago or something and i thought i was listening to one of the songs i don't remember which one it was we'll find out and i was like is that slap bass because it sounds like the seinfeld theme or something it definitely could be <laughs> like yeah but is it slap bass if you're not slap like do you slap uh, how does you that, slap it with your like, thumb like, like this. the strings yep okay yep Hmm. yeah it, it, well, well, and there's other ways there's different ways to do slap bass because you can also pluck it and that's still considered yeah. sort of slap all right well there will be a song and you will point it out we'll point me. it out <laughs> well, we'll point it out when that comes up <clears throat> i think i would say i like that song better than the first one really i this is like one of my least favorite ones on this really album. okay i it it it's, felt it's darker i mean yeah i don't know there's like a weird like it's so hard to articulate some of this because when I think of the 80s, one of the things that I think of is like, even though I think of like synth, synths and stuff, yeah. one of the other things I think of is sort of like imperfections, you know, yeah. like pop music nowadays, every single, every single inch of every song is completely perfect. There's nothing that is like human sounding at all. Yeah. So you think of the 80s like that or yes, just anything prior to the 90s? No, no. I think of the 80s really? because I think okay. of them specifically doing things. Like I think of is people. Is that their punk influence? Yes. That, okay. I think of people like singing shrilly or just like shouting and doing weird stuff, you know, You've like. Like Kate Bush and stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just like all that kind of weird stuff. It, it's, it's, a, it's more about like the, the, like the emotion you're trying to push rather than like the, the artistic perfection of what you're yeah. doing. And that's what I think of with the 80s a lot. Because yeah. if you think about like Flock of Seagulls, like I said, I know I keep coming back to them, but I love, but like that, they, that dude did not sing perfectly. No, and a, and a lot sure. of 80s bands, it was more like the, the singer was like, a, his voice was like a novelty. Yeah. And this, he is singing straightforward, but there's also that little twist to it. But the thing is, every other part of the song has that little twist too. Hmm. Like the the lead guitar, there were notes where I was like, "Oh, he is just so close to being like flat or or sharp or something." Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Modest Mouse does that too, and that's why I mentioned Modest Mouse. That's what made me think of it was the lead guitar, which which would be off to the one side. Like they th that guitar player intentionally does notes that are sort of like dissonant within the key, yeah. and so it almost makes you feel like was that a wrong note or was it not? Hmm. And I noticed that several times when they were noodling around. And that's also something that I do think about with the, with the nineties. Yeah. Because the nineties were a direct reflection of the eighties. Whereas the eighties, everything was very shiny and glitzy and glamorous. Mm -hmm. The nineties are very grungy and very do it yourself. And like just sitting with an acoustic guitar and being emotional. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the, that's the nineties or electric guitars, you know, Nirvana and stuff and grunge music and all that stuff. But then also trip hop and all these other things too. It's funny because this but is also a, electronic dance music. <laughs> Sorry. This is a 85 album. So it's smack dab in the middle of the eighties. Right. And you think of the talking heads as an eighties band, but like they, put out two three albums in the 70s in the 70s and yeah. it sounds pretty similar exactly and so like if you heard if we started with one of those you'd be like this is so far ahead of its time right probably which is really interesting which but is what kind of what you're saying about this in influencing the stuff the, from the 90s, 90s. So, like, that's exactly what i'm thinking so yeah. that's really interesting now i will also say if there's anybody out there screaming at me like you idiot that's not you're not right about any of this at all that's because of like i explained at the beginning of the video like i don't know that much 90s music and all the 80s music i know is like synth pop stuff for the most part yeah and i'm just slowly learning about certain things that have been blowing me away like that jane child album that i will scream from the rafters <laughs> is like one of the greatest things i've ever heard now that was 1989 hmm. and then her other album came out in 1996 and then 2001 okay. and all three of her albums are phenomenal and crazy but like you know like the Sometimes I'll hear something and I'm just blown away by the fact that it was in the decade that it was. This isn't doing that to me so much as I'm just like hearing so many 90s things in this. Yeah. So it's really interesting to note that. And I think also like, but there's also lots of 80s in this. And that's kind of what I was starting to say there with like the imperfections. Like the lady was doing the first part of the song when I mentioned that I really like it when a, they like a lady does a female or if, if a male, if a male lead singer, mm -hmm. you have a female backing vocalist. I yeah. think that really helps create a cool big sound mm -hmm. her harmony for this was basically just singing the same thing with the same <laughs> thing you know which is fine you can do that on the third of a, a third of a key or a root or you can do it on the fifth too but like it's not an uncommon way to do harmony vocal vocal yeah. harmonies but like this it felt very 80s for her to be doing that and then when they switched and had that part where they had the additional the other guy in the band come in and do another vocal part and it was felt like three-part harmony it felt much floatier and it felt much more final when it was done rather than the sort of unsettling feeling that just a straight back tone gives you cool so that was really interesting and i'm gonna the background vocals to me are the things the vocals and the background vocals to me are the thing that's been sticking out so far 
But honestly, I could also say that about the guitars. Yeah. You know, so you'll probably say it about the bass. I'll probably say it about the bass when we get to that. What do we got up next? Creatures Creatures of Love. love. Creatures of Love. All right. Track three. Ready? Mm -hmm. Track three. Creatures of Love. Three, two, one. Okay. Now this almost sounds like a happy (laughs) little country ballad here. Yeah. This is in general a happy album compared to like their first album with Psycho Killer. I will say one thing that I really love is when a band has two guitar players, they're panned off to the sides, and it kind of almost sounds like they're playing different songs, hmm. but it somehow works, and then they come together for certain parts of the song. I really love that. So Kaz's Orchestra does that. Oh. One of my favorite bands. There's a bass note. No. A spanky bass note. <laughs> Teasing you. Dude, when the guitars do play together, though, it's really cool. There, I'm really noticing the bass. So this is, I wouldn't call that slapping the bass, and I don't, this might not be what you're talking about, but this is more just like plucking hard. Yeah. Probably using, well, might not be using a pick. Okay, yeah. Slide guitar. Oh. So that was a third guitar part in there. That's kind of nice. Where do you come from? very twangy some of it yeah and it's funny too because the 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 clean electric guitars do sound very like 80s country straight up clean electric guitars yeah oh and that slide guitar is awesome i think that's a slide i would refer to that slide guitar but like his voice does it, it is one of those voices where it almost sounds like he's struggling to sing it you know yeah, so like it's, and I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just a style that a lot of singers in the '80s had. For sure, yeah. Sorry. Very cool. Ooh, those guitar harmonics off to the side. Is that like a steel guitar? In the middle, like that, uh, like a, yeah. the slide guitar. It could be a steel guitar. Yeah, probably. I think that's the same thing, a steel guitar and a slide guitar. I mean, it could also be a dobro, but a dobro is much more like bluegrassy sounding. I don't know if they have a dobro man in there. ask me what year this came out I would say like 1992 like without hesitation because even the snare drum doesn't sound like an 80s snare drum really the drums do not have that like 80s gated reverb sound at all I mean it's almost like blues traveler or something yeah you know yeah I will also I will say well I'll wait I'm just talking over the music Nice uh, little drum, uh, Tom oh, Phil. Dude, I, that slide guitar was really cool. It made that song feel very different. That was a very different song than the rest of this. Yeah, that's really cool. So w- one of the things I was going to say, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think just for a sec. I'll say that David Byrne, um, you mentioned he sounds like timid or something. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, his his whole like image that he put out was like, he, he like he wore like 
thick rim glasses he was like a nervous nerd okay okay um yeah you look at this guy and be like this is not a rock star oh that's really cool he doesn't have like 80s new wave hair or anything like that he's very getting, hipstery sounding to me almost yeah, like it's the way he's pre- presenting he's like thing. i imagine i don't watch a lot of their videos but i imagine he's wearing like just a suit in most of them mm-hmm. and just is like kind of robotic moving and kind of okay kind of nervous yeah okay well i mean it's and yeah that's what it sounds like i think yeah But that's what we were talking about last time, kind of like that, just sort of like a style that that was popular in the 80s that almost felt like you couldn't try too hard to be perfect, almost. And I think, like you said, that comes from that punky sort of aesthetic that a lot of things had in the 80s, you know? For sure. Um, I know one of the things I was going to comment on was the bass, definitely more prominent in that song. A little slappy, but not necessarily slappy, a little spanky kind of sounding bass. Um, Probably just... recorded direct in because it everything sounds very crisp and clear um the guitars do not have any like distortion really on them or at least not too much there's a little bit of color on them maybe but it's very it's very what i would think of as 90s clean guitar which Mm. is crazy but maybe i'm thinking like too oh that was what i was gonna say like this is not the kind of thing that i have much experience listening to so like I don't have a lot of to like compare this to. You can hear everything I'm trying to compare it to, and it's probably not very similar. <laughs> it's but all like, new stuff. <laughs> well, but like, I don't listen to a lot of music. Like that's what something Chris keeps commenting on when we listen to the Metallica. Like I don't like the sound of clean electric guitars. Yeah, pretty much, which is not true, really, because I do enjoy a lot of things that do have clean electric guitars. But for the most part. Like I hate strumming guitars, which is so stupid. <laughs> but there wasn't any strumming in that. It was really beautiful playing. And when the song started, I mentioned that I really like it when bands can have two guitar players. And it sounds like they're playing almost a different song sometimes. And they, yeah. it sounds like they're playing two different parts, but they really work together. And that's how that's the benefit of when you separate the guitars like that, when you separate two sounds that are similar and you have them spread left and, and right, your ear can focus on the middle and you kind of take the things off to the side and you like lessen their importance a little bit. Mm-hmm. And cause, cause if, if both of those things were in the middle, you couldn't have that. Yeah. They'd just be fighting amongst each other and it'd sound like a garbled mess, yeah, yeah. but because they're spread wide, it really is cool and it works really nicely. And then when they come together and do play some of the same notes or have some of the same like frequencies hanging across mm-hmm. and it feels like it's filling the spectrum, the stereo spectrum more, that's when you get those really pretty moments. And that happened in the chorus when that slide guitar thing was happening. But then the slide guitar was right in the middle, but it was very reverbed, so it was spread out across the whole stereo spectrum. So there were moments where all three guitars were like together for moments of time, and it felt really nice. Hmm. That was a very pretty song, I would say. Yeah. Very, like you said, positive, very pretty song. Yeah. So that was, I was surprising. That was really nice. Okay. Track four, Lady Don't Mind. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay, we got some like congos or bongos in this one. Yeah, so there's some auxiliary percussion. What did, what did, what did the lady do in the band? Does she play bass or guitar? I wonder that. I don't know. David Byrne, guitar and vocal. Chris France, drums. Jerry Harrison, keyboards, guitar and backing vocals. Tina Weymouth, bass and backing vocals. So that's awesome. What did he even say there? Little boy? I don't know. Little, little boy. Little boy. Little boy. Definitely real saxophone, real trumpet, a stack section. I 
Again, there's a lot of blur in this. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I guess I need to listen to blur. You do. We're going to listen to You told blur. me hours ago I would like blur. Well, and the funny thing is blur sound, their early career sounds so different than song two. Song two? Yeah. It's the only song I know. I bet if you heard a couple other ones you'd know and you'd be like, this is blur? Because <laughs> you know their first album came out in 1991. Oh. And it song two didn't come out till 2001. Took them that long to make a or second no, song. No, 1996. So sorry. The thing is, sorry, we're, <laughs> we're doing the thing I do. Okay, sorry. The drums are so simple, like drum patterns, but it's really nice. You know the thing that kills me? Remind me to tell you something about the way everything sounds. Okay. Sure. I like when the brass kicks in on this. So. Oh, yeah. Halfway through. And it sounds really good, too. The guy on the right this time isn't playing guitar. He's playing like a Rhodes organ type thing, which is really cool. Or like a Rhodes keyboard piano thing. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a fade out? Wait a second. Oh, yeah, it's going. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh, indeed. <laughs> We got a pretty decent track record so far for us album from the 80s. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm shocked. Wait. Oh, dear. That sounded pretty cool. Oh. Can't wait to get to the next one. No, what I was going to say was, I don't mean this as an offensive thing to say, but... <laughs> Not going to offend me. What it sounds like is every instrument that I'm hearing is so crisp and clean, it sounds like it was sampled from a keyboard. Like, if you went to a keyboard and you found, like, the <laughs> guitar patch and you yeah. played it, that's what these guitars sound like. Would that have anything to do with the remaster, or is that no. just nope. how they recorded it? No, because the remaster would just keeping all the same original sources. Okay. But but I think the keyboard sounds that I'm thinking of came from this type of thing. Hmm. Like, this is how good you could make all these instruments sound at the time. Yeah. And it's very clear and nice. Right. But yeah. like that that bass sound in this is like I could play a bass that sounded identical to that on a keyboard. Hmm. And the thing is, people really the, the subconscious of like the music listener is like if something can be done on a keyboard, mm -hmm. it's crappy sounding or very yeah. generic. You know what I mean? And so like and that's wrong. That's completely false and wrong on the, right, in, yeah. on so many fronts. You know, nowadays we have like an uh, like there's like an affinity for like synths that sound like they're from the 80s. Yeah. Oh, that's throwback retro sounding, <laughs> you know, but like, you know, a good bass is a good bass sound is a good bass sound. And a lot of times nowadays, modern music, bass, bass and other instruments, they don't necessarily you don't try to get the bass to sound as good as a bass can sound. You try to have the bass have like a specific like personality to it. Hmm. Sorry, that was a big p in my microphone, but you try to get you try to get each instrument to have a bit of like a personality with the production. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think of the black keys, I think of everything sounding like it's run through tape machines and everything sounds very saturated and there's distortion in drums and things. Yeah. And 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 that's like an intentional thing. Like very little music is made with the intention of having like everything sound crisp and clear and like a, a, an accurate representation of the best thing like a bass could sound, right? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what this is. Hmm. Like Everything is crisp, clear. There's no crazy effects on anything. It's literally just them playing their instruments. Everything sounds so crisp and clear. I know I've said that just like 40 times right now, but like that's honestly what it sounds like. <laughs> their vocals sound really great. There's no crazy delays or reverb or anything. There's effects on them, but it's not like crazy 80s effects. It's just yeah. like very subdued. It just sounds like... It sounds bland, but the thing is, I don't think it's bland. Yeah. I think we just, we've, like, this sounds so good that it sounds bland. <laughs> sure. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully it someone. Make, it makes me wonder if you would like their earlier stuff a little better. Well, I wonder almost if it's a little more punky and a little more garagey yeah, or something. Because you think that it seems like maybe as they progressed, they tried to clean things, like, 
yeah. make it. But I'm not, but I, I want to, again, I'm not saying any of this is like a negative thing. Yeah. It's just that like, when you're someone that's, when you're in the music industry and you make a song that has like a bass or a, a clean electric guitar that sounds like this, you just wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Because there's, there's, it's just too, it's too It sounds basic. artificial. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It sounds artificial and basic. Yeah. And like. I wonder if they thought this is like, look, we can finally record. This is perfectly clear. I guarantee and that's what they like, thought. This is like this is the culmination. I Why gu- would you ever yes. want dirty instruments again? I guarantee. Yeah. I guarantee that's exactly what they were thinking. And this is like the height of that, right? Yeah. Because, like I said, like if you if you load up a a basic kick and snare sound on like a keyboard, like a cheap keyboard, like mm. th- it sounds like this. Yeah. But the thing is, this was someone really playing this. That's the sound <laughs> that they got. Right. That's this lady playing the bass. That's what the bass the sound they got. Yeah. Is and I don't know if they were perfectionists or. And the thing is, like, we shouldn't scoff at it because what what the people who made the sounds for the keyboard were trying to do was get the best sounds they could at the time. Right. Yeah. So it's really interesting. But then you also think about like the '90s, and the '90s were all about taking sounds and like you know hip hop and all those things, taking samples of things and and messing with it to the point where you couldn't really tell what it was when you first started. Yeah. And then throwing loops and things over the top of it and lots of dirty, grungy sounds and distortion and stuff. We got computers. Right. We can do weird stuff. And this now. is the exact opposite of that. This is like a crisp, clean, basic sound, hmm. which is really interesting because I would. I don't I've never listened to anything like this. Yeah. Like I've heard music like it, but I've never really listened to it. Yeah. I've always thought like that talking, it sounds talking good. heads are not like, oh, they're a new white band. It's like they're they're kind of their own thing. Yeah. Really interesting. I can't really speak to that not having heard their other stuff. Sure. But are you digging it so far? I like it. Mm. I wouldn't say that I love it though. Mm. And honestly, to me, like it, there is a a large part of it is just like I've said so many times, like if it's just guitar, bass, drums, vocals, it's hard for me to get into it, yeah. which is so silly. But the thing is, there's a lot of other things going on, and the background vocals have been fantastic in every song. At least there's a lot to that you're teaching me about production. Well, Because there, that... <laughs> there's a lot for you to say on this. Yeah, there is. But, but I love the background vocals, and I have said countless times in all my videos that I think background vocals are the least underappreciated aspect in all of music. Because good background vocals can make a song, can take a song to the next level, or they can ruin a song. Yeah. And like, and when I say background vocals, that means harmony vocals, that means vocal overdubs, that means gang vocals, that means, you know, shout vocals, that means whatever kind of any vocal other than the lead vocal track. Hmm. And it's all being done very well here. So I bet they did have a great live show. If they could oh, all, yeah. si- if they can all sing and I'd, they. I'd be curious for you to watch the concert film and see how, um, how tight they are live. Yeah. Well, and they probably also have like a more chaotic live show too, right? Like do I they so, yeah. probably run well, around a little bit and. Uh, no, I think maybe I not. Know. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Really interesting, though. Let's keep going. We're going to be track five, so we're going to be over halfway through. This is Perfect World. This is a four and a half minute song. Mm-hmm. We'll see if it fades out. We're mm. one for one for five, which is not that bad. <laughs> Especially I thought every song was going to fade out. So, yeah. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Love it. <laughs> You know what I'm also thinking of? This reminds me of something like kind of maybe like Roy Orbison, like yeah. Pretty Woman or something like that almost. Sure. Which, what, what decade was that? Roy That's Orbison 80s, was right? 50s and then he came back in the 80s. Yeah, but Pretty Woman Pretty is from Woman, the 80s. It was his comeback song, right? Yeah. Was it? I don't know. I think so. I think that's Roy Orbison. It was Roy Sorry, Orbison. hold on. We're, let's restart this. Okay. Because <laughs> I really like that. Yeah. Thing. Okay, all right, all right. Oh, and there was like a shaking thing in there too. Yeah like a bones rattling thing <laughs> and that that like that's that's my girl is it a voice or a kazoo yeah you're right like that's my girl yeah <laughs> temptations that was a voice though it was just someone going ah. oh. pretty sure He's holding his nose <laughs> <laughs> he is a good singer though yeah. like he's doing a lot with his voice the guy on the side is playing that Rhodes piano again sound yeah this is my favorite song on the album yeah oh yeah so far yeah so far A 
<laughs> Dude, that's cool. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, there's like a little rattly thing off to the side. Yeah. Oh, they got multiple ones. <laughs> That's cool. He has such a weird way of enunciating stuff. A vlog? Dog? <laughs> like, it's weird. But that's what I'm talking about. That's the uniqueness of his voice. Dude, it sounds so clear. The more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm like... <laughs> now the guitar on the left, for me, left, right, for you, would just be doing that... Dump, 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 dump. Very simple. All everything's doing a rhythmic thing rather than a lead thing. Oh, now we got guitar. Guitar's on the other side now. <laughs> I like that part. Kind of makes me think of the band. Sweet. Totally different thing, though. It's a completely different thing. <laughs> but very cool, though. Somebody said that it happens all over the world. God, I love the background vocals. I do. Whoa. This sounds like a... That sounds like a synth bass. This sounds like she's playing the bass on the keyboard. Hmm. Maybe she has been this whole time, and that's what I was talking about. Maybe. I don't think so. That slap bass sounded pretty real. In that track, too. Ooh. You went low that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird dude. That hey, hey, hey is like classic talking heads. Really? It's in a lot of their songs. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> it's like scatting, like, kind of. Like him getting out of breath while he's singing is like, yeah. that's, that's him. <laughs> See, this is cool because they're just playing the riff and he's basically like doing like a solo <laughs> over the top of it. He's bebopping and scatting all over. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> hey, and the this brass is back. Yeah. They always show up late. That's cool, though. A good way to build a song. Yeah. Dude, yes, that is my favorite song. That one was good. Yeah, that I loved everything about that was so good. Even his like weird vocal solo. <laughs> it's like that was one take. You get one take. Just do whatever you feel. Just whatever you feel. He's like, right. ah, 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 ah. <laughs> like someone's someone's tickling him. <laughs> hey, hey, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that's that was great. That whole song was more based on the piano than the guitar. Co mm. Totally. That whole song was was based on just someone playing very simple chords on the, that Rhodes DX sort of sounding patch. Mm. And then it, he played it, whoever was playing it, I assume it was the guy that probably was playing the guitar before, uh, when they got to the chorus, went up a little bit higher and you could really tell. And then the, the, the uh, brass came in at the end. Again, background vocals phenomenal the entire time. I like it. I like this. Yeah. I liked that song more than, like I said, that was my favorite song so far. It's good. So. It's not, it's, I guess I wouldn't have thought of it as my favorite. <laughs> really? Yeah, I love, I like that <laughs> Listening one Listening to it now, though, um, and really paying attention is like, yeah, yeah, it's great. And they're definitely taking the boom, doom, yeah. doom, 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 which yeah, is, you're that's, right. which that's many songs throughout his, that's <laughs> not just My Girl, but right. that's I'm like the most iconic version. I'm sure there's a YouTube video com compiling of all the songs that do that. Including yeah. the song. <laughs> well, I mean, that's like if you were, you couldn't do that with for certain things, you know, like uh, imagine if you did blues, you know, <laughs> right. the 16 bar blues is like in every single blues song. 10 hour so it's like, YouTube video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I like that. I just kind of want to move on. Yeah. I thought that that was great. This is stay up late track six, three, two, one. They all start yeah. very abruptly. They do. Yes. <laughs> 
Okay, now here this kick sounds completely different. <laughs> He's not done. <laughs> He's still hailing the solo from last time. That kick sounds completely different. I like this one a lot, by the way. Piano, no guitar so far. That bass is real. You can hear her sliding on it. Oh, yeah. Shaker. <laughs> I never noticed that line. <laughs> that big hit on that tom, that floor tom there at the end was kind of nice. <laughs> Dude, weird. Yeah. See, for not knowing anything about Talking Heads, that's more like what I was expecting. Oh, really? Just like goofiness. That's super weird, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. Probably because I brought it here. Uh, I don't think you've ever shown me that before. No, but... Oh, just that, that that's something that's you would like? Would be into. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Organ. Yeah. Very loud organ. Piano is still going. Also, the hi hat is panned pretty far to the side. Very cool, almost circusy sort of piano thing. Yes. He's definitely not playing very much of the kit. Like he's focusing just on hi hat, kick and snare, and that's it. Whoa! But I refuse to let you go. <laughs> right? That was that panning. Mm -hmm. was... Yeah. There's no way this one fades out, right? Oh, there's absolutely that, a way that'd it That'd be crazy. No way. <laughs> oh. There comes the guitar. Right. A little late. <laughs> well, he just reached over and grabbed his oh. guitar, but he was playing. <laughs> Those are like some rockin' little licks. Yeah. Okay, that was my second favorite song. Yeah, that's... Uh... You see what I mean about this being a very positive album? Yeah, like, for sure. For a lot sure. of feel good songs. Yeah. Dude, that was, I love the piano there. But again, the piano sound was like the most generic electric <laughs> keyboard piano sound imaginable. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it's really interesting. Now that one, now once I said that, I'm like, okay, this is, that's what this is. This is yeah, just you, very, you just got to get over that. You, well, it's not even or something to get over. Accept. You just have to learn to appreciate it for yeah. what it is. <laughs> but, but you have to do that because that's just what it is. Like, there's no deviating from that. But, right, yeah. but, but then also his weird ass vocals, <laughs> just like weird stuff that he's doing. Very interesting. It's the vocals that draw me to talking heads. I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Well, the the rest of it I would say is a little bit generic-y, but also mm. not. Like like that was a completely different song than the first few songs where the guitars were doing different things on the sides. Yeah. That was completely different. So yeah. that was that was very interesting. Now I will also say I'm a sucker for piano. So oh, like okay. so few bands actually use piano in music nowadays, especially nowadays, because why would you use a piano sound when you can use literally any other sound that's ever been created or create your own new one, you know? Yeah. So like so few bands actually use piano. 
And I've actually been listening to a lot of symphonic metal recently, which uh, symphonic metal is my probably my favorite genre of music. But it's really nice to just sit back and listen to someone playing the piano really nicely. Hmm. And I love that, the offbeat thing. It was almost ragtimey kind of what he was doing. Yeah. was really neat. I I liked it. I also like it when a guitar player can like set down his guitar and play the piano for a while. Yeah. That's really nice. And just pick it up and uh, down, I, down, 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 I've always appreciated that with Blue October. They they have their keyboard player also plays some guitar, some uh mandolin, and mm. then him, his other main instrument is violin. Mm. So like he he does all sorts of different things, but he can like have his violin over here, play like this, do this. And I don't mean that one man. That's man. not like what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like the idea that a guitar player wouldn't have such a huge ego yeah. that he can take his guitar. Someone, you know, the roadie comes off stage, he hands it to him and he plays <laughs> piano for a couple songs. Yeah. That's awesome because not a lot of guitar players would do that. Okay. So that's, that's really nice. I like that. Okay. Up next track seven, walk it down. 444. We got some long songs left. Yeah. Sure. So so 444 walk it down. 3 2 1 Ooh. Wait, what on earth? I, I don't know what that is. So there's more things happening here. So we got an organ off to the side, guitar, bass, and then that <laughs> thing, which I'm tempted to say would be either just a keyboard patch or a bass with a funky effect on it and just repeat it. On the opposite side, balancing the hi hat. Awesome. I love when it just sounds like a group of people singing. Yeah, I yeah. love that. It's like they got a choir. Yeah. Yeah, and in this case, they probably recorded them twice. Like oh. they were all in the room and they did a vo vocal take, and then they were all in the room and did the, a second vocal take. Same thing. The cool thing about this song is like clearly that <laughs> thing is like the basis of the song. Yeah. It's like a different, it, totally unique thing, but they're not letting it like it doesn't mean anything other than it's a sound, yeah. you know? Which is cool. Also, that was really nice. They finished the chorus and then they went back through kind of like everything came down energy wise. And before the next verse started, they kind of went through a whole section to let everything breathe a little bit build up and then go back into the verse that was very nice i talk about music having patience so much on my channel that's what i mean <laughs> having a section to connect between the verse and the chorus without just going from one to the next that was cool oh that that like that bending guitar thing is flying around the stereo spectrum I should also say I have not heard a single word anyone said. <laughs> I have not paid attention to a single lyric. Yeah. So if someone's back there going, how could you not hear that amazing lyric, that deep, meaningful thing? That's not what I, I'm here for. I listen to the last lyrics. I don't listen to any lyrics. A bell. Love that. <laughs> Just a keyboard patch. Yeah. But there's also strings in there. Yeah. And I think that sounds like real strings. Hey. Organ. These last few songs have felt a little jammy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're getting longer. Yeah. I like that. They could noodle around it during concerts and do their own, like, yeah. probably improvised parts, too. Sure.
this is reminding me a lot of the album I was going to have you react to. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. I don't even want to tell you about that because I want it to be surprising. We'll probably just do one song, but... Yeah. Great. Loved it. I loved that song too. Cool. I love the fact that they came back to the chorus again. Damn, I like that too. <laughs> um, we don't have to talk too much, but I, I like that one. Yeah. I really like the background vocals there. I mentioned it felt like they recorded more tracks. Mm -hmm. Like if I would assume probably what they did was they had everybody in the band, in the studio, all with headphones, and they were listening and then they performed their part probably a little further back from the microphone. Talk it down. Ba da da. <laughs> da da da. Right. And then they probably recorded that, mm -hmm. and then they did it again. Sure. And they pan one slightly left, pan one slightly right, and that gives more of the impression of it being not necessarily a choir or a chorus of people, yeah. but it is definitely that like gang vocal sound. You'll hear that on the last song at the start. Okay. So keep that in mind. Yeah, okay. I'm re really excited for that. I really liked that one. I liked the way that the background vocals sounded there. It was... Mm tighter harmonies it sounded less shouty like they were all just shouting the same thing because you can have a whole 30 people all together shouting the exact same note and it sounds like a chorus yeah but one person recording himself 30 times doing the same note does not sound like a chorus hmm. if he if he does it the same if he does it with a different voice every time yes right yeah. but if you just do it the same take every time 30 times it doesn't work sure. so but this sounded like effort was put into the actual vocal part. Hmm. Like there was actual specific notes chosen and, and sung and performed to make it sound more like a choir. So that was really nice. I like that. I love the rest of it too. One thing I will notice that I was going to point out, but it kind of stopped and then I couldn't tell if it was going, was they were doing the thing, especially during that longer instrumental section, where the snare would hit on like the two of the beats. So it's like one, well, actually what they were doing was one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So what they were doing was the first time the snare hit, you just heard the snare. But then the second time it came back around, it was a snare with a big clap with lots of reverb on it. Hmm. So it was... And that is a super common thing, but people don't usually pick up on it. But that one thing that does is it makes it feel like you're moving. It makes it feel like you're you're moving. Okay. Through. It's kind of a weird thing to explain, but, or to, to, when you notice it, you notice it all the time. Hmm. But a lot of the times, what they'll do is artists or um, mixing engineers will take a snare drum and they'll just slightly pitch it up every other time. So hmm. it's, it's, like, it's a subtle thing, but it gives the song a feeling of movement or almost of like a swaying motion sometimes. Hmm. It's rather than just being, robotic i see what you mean yeah. yeah and so that's and the thing is when you play a snare drum in real life which might have been i'm sure the guy was actually playing a snare drum there and then they just added that clap sample over the top of it but when you play a snare drum you can play it like that yeah you can hit the snare on snare drum on different parts of the head to make it sound differently and you can hit it harder and softer and it makes a different sound hmm. so a, a, a good drummer would know how to do that and would just do that automatically probably Without even thinking, it might even be a subconscious thing. But when you make electronic music, it's hard to get those types of subtleties and things because you, you can't do that. Every time you hit the snare on the keyboard, it sounds the exact same because it's the same sample. Yeah. Sure. You know, nowadays it's not. Right. Now they have like three or four or five or six different samples on every key. And depending on how hard you hit it, is, it sounds different. But. Yeah. So that was really neat. No. Okay. You um, just schooled me. <laughs> that's all right that this was interesting is, i love all this stuff so okay this is the long song this long is song, six minutes yeah. and ten seconds this is television man ready yep three two one okay the snare has more or the kick has that 80s reverb on it again okay we got the rhythm rhythmic guitar and then also rhythmic keys This is reminding me of something. Hmm. Roxanne, maybe? Maybe. 
tasty bass. Of boom, boom, boom. Love it. Yep. Ooh. So now we got oohs and ahs in the background. Ooh, there's a big slap. <laughs> See, that makes me think of like Oingo Boingo or something funky. Yeah. Yeah, we should. I should have mentioned them. They're getting close to this. Yeah. I'd but say. they're more chaotic with what I've yeah, heard. Yeah, for sure. You know, Oingo Boingo is uh, Dan, the guy Danny from Timber. Elf. Yeah, Danny Elfman. Yeah. I found that out and I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? The speaker's out of He was yelling, yelling to the sound guy. <laughs> Nonsensical words. <laughs> the Smiggle Smoggle Zoo. <laughs> you knew a girl like what? <laughs> I love the Oz. This is an interesting chorus. If this is the is chorus, the I chorus? guess it is. I don't know. This is, right? Oh. Yeah. This is the song with the bass that I was noticing so much. Okay. Because it's that one note that just smacks you in the face. Yeah, I think it was that note. This is the... We have not heard ride cymbal very much at all. That's very interesting. <laughs> what is that song? What am I thinking um, <laughs> Baby, look at them. Make me do that Congo. Miami Sound Machine. That is Miami Sound Machine. Dude, that's like their worst song. Yeah. That is. Okay. Dude, good luck. Good luck call and response to this guy. <laughs> He'll just go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. This is so 90s. <laughs> this is something that could be in Sister Act, right? This is the soundtrack to Sister Act. Sure. This is when they're all outside playing or doing something like, and Sister Act was 1992. That's cool. Yes, very spacey. It's like a theremin or like something. Like a theremin almost <laughs> sounding. Or a keyboard that had like, yeah. with a portamento on or whatever. That's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> and just using that snare to keep everything going. And the hi-hat. Dude, this is, that's cool. I love that bell sound. Yeah. That's very missing persons. <laughs> yeah. They cool. definitely recorded this digitally. Yeah. You know, because they have all this freedom with all these tracks. Right, yeah. It's getting a little tubular bellsy. Yeah. A little guitar. Call me a guitar. <laughs> I bet this was a fun live song. I'll bet, yes. <laughs> now this is 80s <laughs> right yeah. he reminds me of something sometimes when he's doing this weird stuff I can't think of what it is though dude in that that saxophone that baritone sax or tenor sax it's a, it's a little Mark Mothersbaugh of Devo, although I know you're not familiar with them. So no, I don't know Devo at all. Yeah. I think when I think of Devo, I think like chaotic, right? More chaotic, but also very clever in the way they're being fun. Yeah. Uh, if there was anything in my cup, I would have just knocked it all over my autographed Justin Wilson record. <laughs> 
I definitely like the second half of this album more than the first. Yeah. Once that those guitars went away, I'm like, okay, I, I'm grooving with it a little bit more. Yeah. It's very groovy the last it, few songs, though. Let's see what I mean. Like about you said, the funk. funk. Yeah. Yeah. There's other other albums of theirs are much more this. So maybe you would like their other ones. I don't know. This is great, though. Yeah. And the fact that they ended it, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Um, that was great. Um, so I don't know what that song was about because I couldn't really understand it. Well, I, I television the, man makes me think it's some sort of social commentary or a televangelist type of thing, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Or you know, the thing I heard him say a lot was "huh," <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but "huh," <laughs> I don't know about that. But yeah, um, yeah I, that definitely felt these last. I don't know if it was the song, this song or the song before, but there's definitely some songs that feel like they were made for them to like jam all over. Yeah. You know, like just There's just keep repeating, the, repeat in. the same thing a whole bunch, and let let the people noodle around. You know, yeah. probably live, they the guitar player can do some stuff. They like to do that because in the, in the concert film, it starts out just David Byrne on stage with a guitar, and then he does a song. He does Psycho Killer, I think, which is a very down tempo, like really mm-hmm. simple song, and then. I don't know who comes in next, but like the next song has the drummer and then the next song they bring in the third guy and then the next song. And then finally it takes like five songs for the whole band. Again That's there. really cool. That's yeah. a really neat way to approach that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they like building up like that. Yeah. That no, that's cool. I like that. And there was all sorts of weird sounds in there. Yeah. You know, I love that bell part. Yeah. That was cool. Like you said, those almost like tubular bell sounding things. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. I like that. The theremin sounding thing. <laughs> that was really cool. Don't know exactly how they would have done that at the time, you know, unless they had some sort of a keyboard that could do that because something running through you, an oscilloscope. Well, you can make a keyboard like you could, depending on the settings of the keyboard, you can make it so that when you play a note down here and a note up here, it's two notes and they both play simultaneously. Yeah. Or you can have it set so that only one can play. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you do that, you there's a port portmento or portamento sound yeah. and what it happens is you hit the low one first and then you hit the high one and what it does is it transitions from the low to the oh. high in a smooth thing yeah and so um that's a super common thing to do in electronic music hmm. and uh but but it's but what it happens is you have to be careful because anytime a note is sliding what you're doing is you're sliding through key notes you're sliding through frequencies and tones that They're aren't in the key fun yeah. that aren't in the key no good of the song because the key of the song only has 12 possible notes that can be in it and yeah. of of those 12 possible notes only uh eight or whatever are actually in the key mm. and so when you're sliding from note to note to note to note you, you know you're you're hitting lots of tones in between all of those things mm. that are not in the key and so that's why when when you bend a guitar or whatever it sounds like it sounds unnatural and and it yeah. can and that's when um you can use uh you can use things like that to make things sound unsettling a lot of the times in oh, atmos- sure. more atmospheric music. A lot of the times things like that happen over long periods of time. Mm. So it's almost like shocking when you hear something go, Ooh, you know, <laughs> it's like a slide whistle. Yeah. But people do that with their voices all the time. They, sure, they yeah. slide between one thing and another and you just have to kind of do it in such a way that you hit the specific points at a certain time. So mm-hmm. I love that. That was great. Uh, okay. Song. We're on to the last track, which is road to nowhere. My favorite song. And this is the one you said you liked the most. Okay. Potentially you'll know this. Potentially, okay. we'll see if it was in a soundtrack or something. Okay, all right. Uh, Road to nowhere. Three, two, one. Well, we know where we're going. There's your vocals again. But we don't know oh my God. This is and we know this is identical to the album I was gonna play for you. <laughs> but we can't say what we've seen. But I love this. Yes. Yeah. The thing is, the band I was gonna show you. They were a band at this point. Oh. Hmm. But they didn't become popular until 1996. Interesting. This is almost like this is the same key, too, as the songs that they have. (laughs) Okay. Whoa. Yeah. (laughs) They're playing the accordion? Sounds like an accordion. Oh, yeah. Or it could be one of those like air, air organs. A Hammond. No. Oh. No. A lot of snare drumming on this one. Yeah. 
No, that sounds like an accordion. Yeah, it is. That's why you like it the most. It's hitting on our Czech heritage. Yeah, you didn't maybe. even know. It. There you go. Come on inside. Dude, that bass is doing quite a bit more. Dum -da -da -dum -da -da -dum -da Oh my god, this is the one band I was going to show you. <laughs> Not the album I was going to show you, but the th they have an album that's like literally the entire thing is just acoustic guitar, drums, bass, and accordion. Yeah. The whole album. <laughs> but I kind of find that album to be a little boring. Yeah. Oh, that... Sounds like a little washboardy thing. Like, sorry, that was probably yeah, unbearable to listen that. to. This is great, though. Baritone sax is back, yeah. Whoa. The way he just did that was very much like, um, uh, that reminded me of someone. Do you ever listen to Faith No More? Just the one song. They're like a cross between this and Black Sabbath. Oh. Huh. Kind of. Or maybe not Black Sabbath, but yeah, I guess kind of. I mean, I know they do that one War Pigs cover. Right there, but they, they have this energy. Hmm. But they're heavier. Yeah. But Mike Patton is just like this dude. I bet they're both weird dudes. Like Mike Patton sings like opera and stuff, too. Oh, cool. I like this. There's like a, there's like a, like a hopeful sort of like tone in this whole time. Yeah, right at the end. Yeah. <laughs> that was like they shot an elephant during the re recording studio. There's more. <laughs> Ooh, one of the tracks of vocals there had a really weird like rotary effect on it there. Oh, that was really interesting. Cool. Okay, so that's the end of the album. That was yeah. really enjoyable. Yeah, way more. I was worried those first two songs. I was like, oh, I don't know. Right. But then it got better after they put the guitars down and picked up the keyboards. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I see. That's the, funny. I, I, yes, like I said, I definitely like the second half more. Yeah, I really did like the couple songs that I mentioned that I really liked a lot. I know one of them was, uh, I think, "Lady Don't Mind." Perfect World was one I liked. Perfect World. Yeah, Perfect World was one I liked, walk and then down. "Walk It Down." Yeah. And Television Man was good. And I like Stay Up Late a lot and Road to Nowhere. That's, Road to Nowhere is my favorite Talking Heads song. Which is interesting because that was definitely the most unique song on there, yeah. I think. With that, just the... T -t 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 -t. Like yeah. it was a constant... It building like, and... Yeah, yeah it definitely built. They, and it, do you like you like the fact that it starts with the harmony vocals like yeah, that? Yeah, I think that's cool. Like the choir vocals. Right, and then it ends with that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so crazy when that started. <laughs> that is like identical to something that I'll show you later. Yeah. Like I, you're going to listen to it and you'll be like, oh my gosh. Hmm. Uh, I love that though. And I think the fact it, it should, I, I want to mention like not every band could do great sounding vocal harmonies like that. Yeah. Like the fact that they have that, the fact that everyone in the band can do that is really great. I bet that sounds great live too, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, that's really awesome. Because that was like multiple, multiple part harmonies. So I would assume yeah. that everybody, even probably the drummer, has a microphone on him, right? Probably. I don't know. Yeah. I'll bet, I'll bet the drum, even the drummer sings multiple sometimes mm -hmm. there. Because especially when you start with something like that, like you can do that if you're the drummer without having to drum. Yeah. You know, and then when the drums and everything kicked in, that kind of a part went away. And at the end, it did come back in. But, you know, drumming and singing is not an easy thing. Yeah. I would definitely, well, I don't know if that'd be any hard. I, I would say, yeah, it'd be harder than just get playing a guitar and singing. Because you're doing, like, a different thing with your left foot. 
your right left hand, right hand, right foot, completely different things each hand. Yeah. Then you're also singing over the top of it. Not that you're that's much different than like doing something different with all five of your fingers <laughs> on your left hand and right hand. That's true. You know, like there's a lot to think about, but yeah. but that is interesting. Much more common for people to sing and play the guitar, though. I mean, that's sort of the fundamental basics well, of a lot of the music. Well, you know, but I'm just saying, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. not as common for... So I don't even know. Maybe yeah. the drummer doesn't sing in this at all, but I'm pretty sure he probably did there. But, uh, um, yeah, the first two the first two or three songs kind of threw me off a little bit because I was like, that was when I was talking more about, like, the sort of basic sound of it. Yeah. And I definitely think they kept that the whole time they were going. But to me, it felt like, it felt like less egregious... Because it was when they started using the keyboards a little bit more as a rhythmic instrument, mm-hmm. I was like, okay. I mean, like I said, anytime you heard piano on this album, it was the most generic sounding piano patch <laughs> that ever existed. Right. But the thing is, it's generic to us now, 40 years later. Yeah. You know what I mean? 38 years later, every keyboard has that. that you can go to Walmart and buy a $15 keyboard and it has that sounding piano on it. Right. But at the time, they were probably like, wow, this sounds like a great clean piano. Like a digital piano. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but and but even beyond that, like when you record a piano, there's all sorts of things oh. that go into it. You can hear the all sorts of things. Sure. And this is just, no, it's just a pure piano tone. Uh, so that was actually... You know, once they got more to the that, and then using the ro- the ro- sort of like Rhodes Mark II uh, thing and all that, different keyboard type sounds, I really liked it a little bit better. Yeah. But I think that they were do- they were focusing more on the rhythmic section of it and less of lead instruments, because of those first two songs really, or the first song at least, and the third song, it kind of sounded like the two guitar players were kind of playing on their own, and they were doing very like I always think of it like Modest Mouse because they do that a lot in their music, where it sounds like the guitar player is playing like a lead guitar part, but it's actually being, it's being played like a rhythmic part. Okay. And if you have two guitar players doing their own lead things, it can sound so chaotic and weird. Hmm. And that's when I was talking about having those spread wide. If you had those guitars both in the middle, it would sound like a garbled mess, but it really sounded nice the way it was. But I don't prefer that sound as much as having a piano or some sort of a keyboard be the sort of more focal rhythm point yeah. of the song so I, I enjoyed that aspect of it i think yeah like i said multiple times while we were listening there the gang vocals were like one of the things that really st- not necessarily gang vocals all the background vocals were one of the things that stood out to me the entire album mm. i really liked it all i love the fact that they have a female in their band and they use her voice because i think there's just nothing more awesome than having female and male vocals singing together yeah, that's a really cool thing, and it really helps if 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 for no other reason than the fact that uh you know he, a lot of people like I just reacted to Ellie Golding and I posted it this morning like someone commented on my video or whatever that like Ellie Golding does all her own backing tracks like so it's all her okay. and that's fine she does a great job it sounds fantastic yeah but if you have a different person do your background tracks to me it just brings it up to a higher level. Mm. And the fact that all the members of the band could do things like that, and they had shouty vocals, they had gang vocals, they had parts in some of the songs that made it feel more like a chorus. So Mm. it actually felt like vocal parts, three-part harmony, whatever. Um, All that was very nice. They were very, uh, very talented in the vocal department. Mm. And then he, being so, being so like uniquely weird, like oddball with the way he was singing, I, I, I really like that. I like the I I like this the the weird lead singer. No oh, good. I think that that's cool. I think in this case his weirdness came from the parts he was doing and so much and not like the way he was singing. Really, I I find his voice to be weird. Period. Well, I just I don't think his voice sounded very weird to Maybe me. Maybe just distinct, I guess. But distinct, but also just like he was doing weird things with his voice. He was scatting. He and, didn't necessarily yeah. sound weird. Like the tone of his voice wasn't like, oh, okay. you know, it was, it was, I'm not saying it was generic or anything, but it definitely felt like it fit the music. Uh, yeah. It did feel very crisp and clean and clear and kind of basic a little bit, mm-hmm. but then he was a weirdo. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where the basicness just goes away. But I thought he did a great job as a lead vocalist the whole time. I thought that was great. Cool. So, yeah, it's well, th- that is their music. So I mean, he is front and center on every song, you know. Yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah, I I liked it a lot. I thought it was great. I thought everyone performed everything. I mentioned once in there. I thought everyone performed everything well. <laughs> everyone obviously did perform everything, but <laughs> but I think the drums. You know, it was interesting because the drums and the bass. A lot of the time, I didn't notice them that much. That yeah. much. But they were very consistent, and also they um they. 
they were the the drums in particular i mentioned it i think in one of the songs like i really noticed that they were doing simple things mm-hmm. but that was all the song required the mm-hmm. song didn't need all these crazy drum fills and they didn't need parts where you're using tom drums a lot or you're going from cymbal to cymbal like a lot of the time the drummer was just focusing on kick snare and hi-hat and that was the whole song and you know with some crashes every now and then but that was the core of the song whereas other bands you would have like hi-hat for this section ride over here onto this thing crash cymbals here like let's not play any cymbals at all and you know and and there wasn't as much of that. That there was much more just focus on keeping it very simple and just using the trap set, which is just kick bass or kick snare hi hat. Hmm. You know, he had the toms there and he used them on occasion, but very rarely. Yeah. And the cymbals were just basically crashes to do accent crashes. There was never like a, a part on the cymbals really. Yeah. Other than the hi hat, and then occasionally I mentioned that ride cymbal on the one yeah, song. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, yeah, and then the only the one song he had the like riding on the the snare this last track. Yeah, where it was more of like a sort of like a marching thing almost. Oh yeah, it was kind of a marching song. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and it still had the uh, uh, the bass was doing a lot there too. Yeah, the bass was go- doing the same pattern, mm-hmm. which is basically what the bass did the entire album. Yeah, the bass was basically just playing along with usually the kick drum. Okay. When the kick and the snare was hitting, that was when the bass is playing their part, and then occasionally there would be that one note where she was really like. <laughs> so yeah i liked it though cool. you know i don't have too much else to say about it i thought that that worked out that was really great i liked it well, i'm glad i picked one that you ended up liking yeah yeah <laughs> you know i think it would be the thing the thing is like as long as it sounds good i think i can be positive on something but that's the thing you know? i had no idea if it sounded good well it just sounds great <laughs> okay, but good. the thing is like the only time i get mad at something and dislike it is if it sounds bad for whatever reason yeah, yeah. you know and that's usually not a subjective thing that's more of an objective thing and Oh one. yes, only one fade out. <laughs> so that so this album gets an eight out of nine, which isn't very good. So I, I, eight out of nine is not very good. I, it's almost a ninety percent though. Yeah, but I, I will say that when I what, you remember when I was saying like oh they're I looked up their greatest albums and this is like towards the middle of the list mm-hmm. or something and their their greatest album is Remain in Light and so I loaded that up really quick and I flipped through them like okay there's this song this song for that um, and I checked all of them and I think um, like every song except for one faded out on that oh so they used to do that a they used lot to do more the fade out, yeah um and then i guess they stopped at some point well, did you notice their songs being shorter feeling when they were fading out like that uh i i don't register fade outs yeah well i just know <laughs> like a lot of do. people did fade their songs out because they were too long so they're just like oh, oh fade it out i guess pick the point where it can't end and then just fade yeah, it out no. yeah. they had good endings on this one yeah, I liked all of them. Yeah. And I mentioned there also on one of the songs the, about patience. Yeah. You know, the fact that they would went from the chorus, you know, it was verse, chorus, and then after the chorus, they just let it be an instrumental part before it went back into the verse. Yeah. That's really great. That's something that artists do not do nowadays. They want to get their TikTok song done in three minutes. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. so they don't have sections where there's nothing singing. Ellie Golding's new album, which I've already mentioned several times, every single song is the exact same thing. The moment it starts, pretty much vocal start, and there's just verse one, chorus, verse two, chorus, and then there's just a tiny little half bridge section, chorus, and then done. Hmm. Every single song ends with the chorus going, and then when the chorus is about to end, everything slowly starts to fade out and ends with her vocals just going blah, 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 vocals on vocals are the only thing left and it feels like that it feels like blah, 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 blah. Huh. every single song nine of the 16 songs were, were that done that way yeah. and um which that, is really interesting but that's because they wanted to shorten the songs so they don't have yeah. outros or any sort of patient moments like that but i'm very grateful that they chose to keep the structuring of the song the way that they did and still have a third chorus in there which they did here even several of their longer songs where they did have a little almost like a solo section without a solo in there yeah Right. The dude was noodling around sometimes with his voice. (laughs) But some of the times when they were just jamming, there wasn't necessarily a look at me. I'm going to play a solo now part. (laughs) Um, It was just a jam. It just felt like a rhythmic section going and just a cool groove. And then they always came back to the chorus at the end of that, which is something I really appreciated. So I'm, I'm really glad that they did that. Props to all the singers, though. That was the thing that really... And we only had one, well, two songs with like bongos, congo stuff. Yeah. And one song it featured prominently, and then the other song it was just kind of like already a crazy song. So yeah, right. It's it not, didn't really like focus too much the, on that. It was just an extra thing. Yeah. So yeah. Really yeah. Some of their other albums, like that, remain in light. A lot of a lot of bongos, a lot mm-hmm. of a lot of African beats. I wonder if that's one of the reasons people like it so much. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. 
Not me. All right. Well, well, I think that was a good reaction video. Hopefully, people watch it. Thank you for watching it. If you're here with us, yeah. So you're the only person that would ever see that is someone that's still here. So and if this gets much. ten thousand views, you'll do another oh talking. God, I'll do every talking. Do heads. Another talking if this album. gets, if this gets, <laughs> I'll be shocked if this gets more than five hundred. Yeah. Honestly, but it doesn't matter. I'll be shocked if it doesn't does. have to remove the music. Yeah, me too. I, I, I don't. We'll yeah. see. Anyway. All right. That was Talking Heads. Thank you very much for watching. I've got lots of good stuff coming up here on my channel. I don't have any good VNV Nation coming up, though, because I listened to their album <laughs> yesterday morning, and it was awful. Very, very disappointing. So I don't know when I'll get around to editing that. Sometimes I just don't ever edit the the, the album so reactions that go negative. You don't want to put that negativity in the world. I don't. Especially I, I uploaded my heavy reaction, which was because that album was terrible, too, and that's got like 160 views. Yeah. And they're a pretty big band, but so I don't know. But I don't know if people are looking it's, to... Maybe people are listening to it, not liking it, and then not caring to watch reaction videos. Maybe. I would think if someone would listen to it and not like it, they would then search for it. Oh, maybe. I think that yeah. would be the thing. Sure. Like when Diablo Swing Orchestra released their album, not last year, but the year before, I think, and it was so bad, people found my reaction video and they were all like, mm. thank you for explaining <laughs> this. Because in, in that video, I did what I did with the heavy video where I actually boosted the high frequencies with EQ. Mm. Yeah. And so you can actually hear the difference. And like that album is so messed up in so many ways, that Diablo Swing Orchestra album though, <laughs> that it's, you can't even, whatever. But gosh, what a shame that is. But <laughs> but like people liked that video because of that. Like yeah. they searched it out because of that. Good. And that video has like 600 views on it or yeah. something or so. Cool. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We got lots of good stuff coming up. I got new Death Stars coming up. I got new, what else? Anyway, new Seven Dust was just uh, announced for January 20, or not January, July 28th. Very much looking forward to that. And I just found out today at one of the record stores we were at, brand new Matchbox 20. Yeah. Very excited for that. That is going to get copywritten. <laughs> that, well, I will not be able to use that. But I love Matchbox 20. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of a secret side project that no one's supposed to know. Over the last year or so, I've been trying to maybe figure out my top 20 favorite albums of all time. Oh. And there are two Matchbox 20 albums in Whoa. play there. And one of them I listened to the other day, and there are three songs on it that fade out. <laughs> and I still consider it to be maybe in my top 20. Man. And I actually have, I own four copies of it on CD, and two of the... CDs have two copies of it in the in the case, so I actually have six copies of that album, Weird. and I just have them in case someone comes to our door and is like, "Hey, I need the greatest album of all time," and I can be like, "Here you go." Yeah, you can give just out a Halloween. Hand it to him. Yeah, I could give. Exactly. <laughs> have a basket with just Matchbox Twenty CDs in it. Here you go, kids. What is this? <laughs> anyway, my point is, I'm very excited for Matchbox Twenty. New new Matchbox Twenty. Very excited for that. Yeah. So join us for that, and I will see you. Then, maybe not, I don't know. Regardless, I'll see you next time.